Hello everyone and thanks so much for joining us for this Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service and I'll be hosting today's broadcast. And for the uh, hazardous weather graphic, uh, here first one to show, we've got a uh, blizzard warning here, eastern Arctic coast, uh, winds 40 gusting 50 miles an hour or 20 to 30 miles an hour with gusts of uh, 40 to 55 miles per hour. The gust between 40 and 55 miles per hour up here. Well, that uh, the wind creating whiteout conditions, snow and blowing snow, especially uh, the extreme eastern Arctic coast here. And that's out through 6 a.m. Friday morning. And then uh, conditions will improve. They may begin to improve before that time, but that's out until 6 a.m. Otherwise, uh, much better back to the west there with lighter winds and uh, much greater visibilities. Blizzard warning also in effect here from the northwest coast, Kivalina, and the north shore of the Seward Peninsula areas for the same conditions there. Winds gusting as high as 55 miles an hour, snow and blowing snow, whiteout conditions at times, or at least visibility is less than a quarter mile in these areas, and that's out until 6 a.m. Friday as well. And the yellow area through here from the Kobuk Valley and Ambler eastward along and just south of the Brooks Range. That's a wind advisory for uh, winds gusting to 45 miles an hour. And that is uh, out for tonight and until noontime on Friday for those winds to continue again to gust to about 45 miles an hour. On the satellite, we've got uh, disturbance here, clouds associated with the uh, blizzard conditions going on in the eastern Arctic coast. and an area of snow trailing back into the north slope there and then kind of tapering off here to the west. Lots of sunshine south of the Brooks Range though. A few clouds tan off valley here, especially over the eastern interior. Uh, some weak disturbances dropping southward there, uh, really not uh, producing much more than clouds. And the mostly sunny appears here in the Copper River Basin area. Different story for the southeast coast. This band right through here kind of enhancing throughout the day today. Uh, bringing rain to the southern panhandle and uh, mostly cloudy skies all the way up to the north toward the passes, but uh, precipitation more showery toward those northern areas and then cuts off back here to the west, but there is a weak band right through here spreading at least clouds westward along the uh, eastern north Gulf Coast. Uh, looks like uh, just getting into the Cordova area for the clouds. Otherwise, sunshine, Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, uh, then mostly cloudy, maybe a few scattered showers here at Kodiak Island and the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, pretty numerous showers here for the Alaska Peninsula of rain and snow, depending on your elevation and time of day into the uh, Fox Islands there. But uh, dry temperatures in the 40s up there in the Perbloffs during the afternoon on Thursday. Looks like some uh, pretty good clearing just to the west there associated with high pressure, which is in advance of the next front pushing a lot of clouds, quite a cloud shield with this and uh, a little warmer temperatures. So snow changing to rain this afternoon in Shimia with winds gusting uh, up to about 45 or 40, 50 miles an hour and west winds gusting about the same there at uh, Adak and Atka with uh, more showery conditions occurring there, rain showers. But again, those west winds uh, still pretty brisk, even blowing uh, associated with the uh, ridge of higher pressure. And rolling this through again, uh, you can see this uh, cloud feature here being uh, trying to get pushed back to the southwest there by the northeast flow. Pretty good winds uh, gusting as high as uh, actually 50 to 60 miles an hour at Tin City. Not quite that strong across St. Lawrence Island. It's still pretty windy there, at least uh, possible gusts 35 to 40 miles an hour there. That uh, push, trying to push this band back to the southwest a little bit there and uh, breaking up as it goes. And for the chart today, there's that uh, vigorous trough bringing the blizzard conditions to the eastern Arctic coast, the main low center, up there uh, toward Banks Island, and then a band of snow extending right on down to the, across the north slope, mostly the central areas there. Uh, not bad barrow this afternoon in the western Arctic coast with those winds, as you can see, increase with a tighter gradient here uh, from actually Cape uh, Lisbon, Point Hope, uh, northwest coast. And again, that blizzard warning out through 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. And not, uh, no blizzard warning, but look for snow and gusty winds to continue into this evening for St. Lawrence Island. Otherwise, uh, scattered rain and snow showers here, Bristol Bay, mostly off the coast, but uh, sliding right on down into the Alaska Peninsula, especially around Unalaska today. Scattered showers, North Gulf Coast, again, all off the coast there, except the exception being Kodiak Island. And uh, 
heaviest rainfall, most numerous or more widespread rainfall there over the southern panhandle, a lot lighter, more showery on up to the north. And this uh, warm front uh, bringing the warmer temperatures and the rain, gusty winds into the western Aleutians. And uh, high pressure here building in, uh, that kept those, kicked those winds, as I mentioned, up to 45 miles an hour over the central Aleutians. And for tonight, uh, that front will continue to push eastward, so rain slowly spreading in toward ADAC. Uh, after something of a break tonight, but look for rain chances uh, probably may not start until tomorrow morning, Friday morning. Otherwise, uh, this ridge will uh, improve conditions, shift the shower activity. A little bit lighter winds there in the central Aleutians. Say pretty breezy northwest wind, especially early on late tonight into early tomorrow morning. Could see gusts maybe 40, 45 miles an hour for the Alaska Peninsula. Snow showers, again, depending on your elevation, but probably mostly snowfall levels down near sea level tonight. Scattered snow showers right up along the southwest coast and off to the west, dry, mostly clear over the inland areas. So looking at that uh, pretty tight gradient up there that lasts through the night tonight, supporting the blizzard warning in that area, but uh, may start improving a little ahead, ahead of schedule there for the eastern Arctic coast late tonight uh, as that gradient uh, slips off to the east and higher pressure builds in from the west and several disturbances aloft dropping southward keep uh, kind of mostly or very, very partly to mostly cloudy, probably mostly cloudy here over the eastern interior, especially north of the Alaska Range with uh, snow showers, a uh, pretty good bet at least some locations up there. And that'll be kind of uh, the trend here for the North Gulf Coast and Eastern Copper River Basin. Wet for the Panhandle tonight uh, and for tomorrow. That system mostly pushes off to the east. Uh, low pressure right over Dixon Entrance, so periods of rain in the forecast here. Dixon Entrance, uh, Heaviest amounts of the south, again, lighter as you head north, but still a chance of rain all the way up to Lynn Canal and Glacier Bay. And dry from the north Gulf Coast with uh, variable clouds uh, into south central Alaska as well. Rain or rain and snow showers here, mountainous areas of the Copper River Basin. Eastern Alaska range, uh, although snowfall levels won't be that high, but uh, still could see some, maybe some rain in there as the colder air is back up here to the north. And uh, another weak disturbance, eagle chance of snow showers, interior areas though, a day much like today. Maybe a few more clouds, south central Alaska, but definitely dry conditions. Dry Kodiak Island, showers off to the southeast. And uh, next storm pushes into the southwest coast with warmer conditions. Gale force winds, maybe to 50 miles an hour. Scattered snow showers over the southeast interior areas and mostly clear through the central interior again. And uh, high pressure shifts to the eastern Arctic coast. Lows for tonight uh, running uh, below zero, five to ten below north of the Brooks Range, and uh, pretty mild down to the south, 30 to 35 uh, here, south central Alaska, mid to upper 20s, Tanana Valley, and upper 30s to near 40 for the panhandle for low temperatures. Highs tomorrow uh, into the lower 50s, mostly in the 50s for the southeast coast. Some areas only in the upper 40s, but uh, very nice days to sit in the valley tomorrow into the mid-50s, 56 degrees. I believe that's for Talkeetna. Even the Tanah Valley, Fairbanks up toward 50 tomorrow. Cooler north of the Brooks Range there, single numbers all the way out to the Arctic coast. Mid-20s for the Nome area and uh, lower 40s for the Aleutians. Lower to mid-40s to upper 40s for the Bristol Bay area. And for the lows on Saturday morning, again, 5 to 10 below up here north of the Brooks Range. And south of the mountains, single numbers warm into the lower 20s there for the Tanana Valley. Back to the west, upper teens uh, for the uh, Seward Peninsula, south of the Seward Peninsula. Lower 30s for Bristol Bay and mid to upper 30s there for the Panhandle. Near 40, Adak and Atka for the lows. And the highs, single numbers, 0 to 10 for the highs Arctic coast. Much milder again, lower 50s to Sitna Valley. And uh, also for the Panhandle, 40s to lower 50s and the Alaska Peninsula, mostly in the mid to upper 40s. On Alaska might push 50 degrees, 31 there at Savunga, same thing for Nome. And uh, Tanah Valley, mid to upper 30s, once again, some areas might hit 40, 41, uh, but generally not much difference. And uh, that's a look at uh, the temperatures for today. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to aviation, we've got uh, some IFR here from uh, the Yukon Delta mostly and in toward the Cuscombe River there on down to the north side, Bering Sea side of the uh, peninsula here and then lots of marginal VFR and then another area of IFR. 
with another front pushing in to the western Aleutians heading on in toward ADAC uh, late tonight and early tomorrow. IFR north slope, eastern interior, marginal VFR for the panhandle. And for the afternoon, uh, again, marginal VFR from Dixon entrance all the way up to the passes. Some VFR here along the north Gulf Coast. And then you pick up the marginal stuff again along the uh, Talkeetna Mountains, Copper River Basin, eastern Alaska Range. Uh, where actually some of these areas may start out IFR early in the day, but becoming marginal in the afternoon. VFR up here to the north till you get to the uh, central Arctic coast, back into the marginal VFR, and uh, more widespread, a more, an area of more widespread VFR out here over the uh, southwest bearing, and now uh, pushing east of Atka Island, and just a patch there near Cape Newenham. For Saturday morning, that area shifts up to the uh, east and northeast, not all that fast, but does make it to the Pribilof Islands uh, early on and to uh, the eastern Aleutians. Uh, IFR there, Cuscoquam Bay, and here along the Aleutian Range on the northwest side. IFR North Slope and along the uh, eastern Alaska Range with marginal VFR here all the way in across the Cuscoquam Valley to the western Alaska range stays VFR, Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, Madnuska Valley, Prince William Sound, but uh, marginal VFR there from the Seward Peninsula all the way into the 40 mile country and IFR now showing up here over the southeast part of the panhandle. And for the afternoon, uh, shaping up like this, that improves down there. You actually start breaking out to some VFR in that area, but still lingering uh, marginal VFR through much of the afternoon there over towards Stewart and Hyder. Marginal VFR on, on up to the north. IFR, Gulf of Alaska, staying off the coast with marginal VFR up along the coastline into uh, Prince William Sound, possibly into the Talkeetnas, uh, probably not, uh, maybe up into that area, but uh, better chance of marginal VFR over toward the eastern Copper River Basin, the Wrangell Mountains. Uh, areas of marginal VFR over toward Kaktovik, Barter Island, and uh, up here across the Seward Peninsula into uh, Kotzebue Sound, maybe Selawik, but uh, lots of IFR now. That's pushed up toward the Bering Strait and extends down along all of the southwest coast here and also along the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula. Fox Island sucked in with IFR, as will be the Pribilof Saturday afternoon. Behind the front, improving to marginal VFR with possible uh, VFR showing up out farther out to the west. Anatuvik looks uh, good tomorrow. VFR for both Anatuvik and Attigan, either approach. And Lake Clark and Merrill, same forecast. VFR conditions uh, for the day Friday. And rainy also. Friday looks uh, like a pretty good VFR day with windy. Same forecast, VFR. And uh, Isabel, conditions a little lower as you head east there along the Alaska Range. Uh, marginal VFR gradually, slowly becoming VFR, hopefully in the afternoon. And uh, not so much for Mentasta, starting out IFR, and that'll gradually become marginal in the afternoon in that, for that pass. Otherwise, Tanita looks pretty good, VFR, as does Portage. We'll go VFR for Portage Pass as well. And Chilkoot and White uh, looks pretty marginal from start to finish on Friday. For the freezing levels here, 2,000 feet here over the uh, southwest part of the state, uh, down to uh, <clears throat> cross Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, and also for the central, southern, southeast coast. Not really much of a thermal gradient here across the area, two to 4,000 feet, and that's about it out over the western Aleutians. At the surface there, near the Pribilofs, into the southwest coast there, Cuscoquam Bay, and now uh, inland now, but still hugging the north Gulf Coast and along the eastern border of the Panhandle. Moving on to icing, uh, areas of uh, light to isolated moderate mixed icing probably here for the southeast coast and to a lesser extent up here over the eastern interior due to those upper troughs uh, keeping their uh, domain of influence in this area. So possibly a little bit of icing there, uh, probably not too significant. The more significant icing will be out here to the west with a uh, load of moisture sliding up into the uh, southern Bering Sea and the western Aleutians. Again, this whole area spreading eastward. So by tomorrow afternoon, should uh, see an increase in the icing threat for Nikolsky. And for the jet stream, ridging here, eastern Bering Sea on up to the uh, main center over the Chukchi Sea and southerly flow back to the west here at about 120 knots, gradually shifting eastward here Friday into Saturday. And then northerly flow here, not too strong, keeping it dry and cool here over the uh, much of the interior areas. 
dropping into the trough here that's well to the south of the Gulf of Alaska. Otherwise, northwesterly is kind of a disturbance up in through here. Tomorrow will drop down into the panhandle probably over the weekend. Uh, and for 9,000 feet, we've got uh, near and off the coast, 25 to 35 knot winds here uh, with that low center south of the Gulf of Alaska. Pretty light over the interior, mostly north and north-northwest. And uh, weak flow around this system out here south of St. Lawrence Island. Stronger winds out to the west, Aleutian southwest bearing 40 to 50 knots or 30 to 50 knots. Lighter here with this ridge axis in the Bristol Bay. And then for three or 9,000, or I'm sorry, 3,000 feet, windy out over the Aleutians and uh, in areas around this low up to 40 knots there along the North Gulf Coast. Turbulence, light to isolated moderate chop, Panhandle, Kodiak Island, Aleutians, and the Northwest Interior as well as St. Lawrence Island. The second planet from the sun. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Alberry, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. As many of you may have noticed, our old friend Venus has finally returned to the early evening sky. Of all the planets, Venus is one of the most beautiful, and its position in the sky has been painstakingly documented throughout recorded history. So much so that we devoted this entire episode to our sister planet, named after the Roman goddess of beauty and love. Let's show you. Okay, we have our skies set to any time this week, shortly after sunset facing west. Toward the northwest, you'll see the bright planet Venus among the stars of Taurus the Bull. Venus is often called our sister planet because it's almost the same size as Earth, about 7,500 miles in diameter. And the reason it shines so brightly is twofold. It's the closest planet to the Earth and it has the highest albedo of all the planets, which means that it is the most reflective. The reason being that Venus is completely enshrouded in perpetual cloud cover, and this cloud cover acts like a great mirror and reflects sunlight very well. Over the next few months, Venus is going to get higher and higher in the sky, reaching its highest point on August 17th. It will be its most brilliant on September 24th, when Venus appears in the sky in the early evening, it's often referred to as the evening star. Venus will stay in the evening for almost nine months. If we could view this from outer space, as Venus orbits the sun, it eventually passes us, is lost in the glare of the sun, and reappears in the morning sky. Venus will then be considered the morning star and will be visible for another nine months. So right now, Venus has just rounded the opposite side of the sun and is swinging around to meet us on our side of the solar system. The last time Venus is on the same side of the sun as Earth was during a moment we call inferior conjunction, and that happened on March 25th, 2017. Over the course of a season, if we trace Venus's place in the sky at the same time every day, it makes a big loop. Then, if we chart the motion over the course of eight years, we get some interesting patterns. Venus's motion in the sky comes in five forms. A squiggle down, a loop down, a zigzag, a loop up, and a squiggle up. That's five patterns in eight years. Then, the patterns repeat almost exactly. The ancient Maya were fascinated by Venus. Venus was sacred to the Maya because, well, the nine-month period of time that Venus spent in the evening sky matched the length of time it took for them to plant, tend, and harvest corn. Corn was a sacred plant to the Maya since it was the plant that gave life. After observing Venus for centuries, the Maya developed an incredibly accurate set of Venus tables that could predict where Venus would be in the sky for years. They even built an observatory just for Venus. This observatory, named El Caracol, translated as the snail, is aligned perfectly so that an observer could see Venus through its windows and at its northern and southernmost extremes in the sky for each of the five looping patterns. Mayan astronomers kept such accurate records of Venus that after 500 years, their Venus tables would only be off by one day. The Maya noticed the five different patterns that Venus would produce in the sky, and they gave each a manifestation of Venus's personality represented by the five different creatures on the Venus tables. Some were good and represented prosperity and a plentiful harvest, and others were not so good and represented hard times and scarcity. 
And if you happen to be outside after sunset on April 17th, we have a treat for you. Venus will be in conjunction with a slender waxing crescent moon just as it begins to get dark outside. Venus will be traveling westward through the constellation of Taurus the Bull as the month passes. So during the next five months, enjoy watching the beautiful planet Venus as she graces the evening sky for all to see. It's easy to do if you remember to keep, keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back, looking at today's sea ice analysis. Uh, a little bit uh, less, some uh, right along the edges melted back a little bit, but the general uh, push is still off to the west-southwest a little bit there, especially the uh, strong winds coming through, strong cold winds coming through the Bering Strait, St. Lawrence Island. And uh, not a lot of change expected over the next several days. Moving on to coastal water forecast for Friday, south, southerly gales on the south coast of the Panhandle, 14-foot uh, seas turning southeast at 35 and then east, coming down to 20 to 30 knots here for the eastern north Gulf Coast. Uh, Lynn, Canal, nor Lynn Canal, north at 24-foot seas, and it looks like uh, got some gale force gusts from the southeast developing there for Stevens Passage, and also gales now, sustained gales, minimum gales for Clarence Strait with those seas uh, coming up to about seven feet. Outlook, first day of the weekend, small craft advisories now for Clarence Strait. Seas uh, falling back a little bit to five feet. Much lighter winds here out along the coast, as you can see. Just south 15 there, but the seas uh, still up a little bit, 11 to 12 feet. East 20, nine foot seas, and then light variable winds up for the eastern north Gulf Coast, uh, 10 knots. And south 15 for Lynn Canal, southeast 15 for Stevens Passage. And then for Prince William Sound tomorrow, northwesterlies at 10 knots, north 10 here for all of Cook Inlet, right on down across Kachemak Bay. And for the Barren Islands, small craft advisories for Norvalies at 25 knots, 9 foot seas. And northeast winds for the North Gulf Coast at 25 knots and uh, nine to eight, 8 to 9 foot seas, so small craft advisories there. But uh, we'll see for Saturday, those really come down, switch direction, light southwest wind, 10 knots there for the coast and six to seven foot seas. Light winds, Prince William Sound, seas slight. Same thing for Cook Inlet, light southwest winds, breeze, barely a breeze at 10 knots or less with two foot seas. And small craft advisories continue for Kachemak Bay out of the west, turning northwest at 25 there for the Barren Islands with six foot seas. And for the uh, Bristol Bay zone tomorrow, light westerlies, Northwest, 20 to 30 knots here. Maybe some higher gusts on the, uh, out of the bays there on the south side. Otherwise, Castle Cape to Sitkanak, north 20 knots. That extends up across Shelikoff Strait. Small craft advisories along the eastern Kodiak Island, Fognac Island areas. And then for Saturday, west winds 20 knots across Kodiak and area. Southwest, or west 20 extends down to Castle Cape. And then back into the small craft advisories, but different directions southwest here. For the area south of or the Pacific side of the peninsula, north side or the Bering Sea side, south 30 knots there, should stay under gale force, 9 foot seas, up to about 15 for Bristol Bay, so not too bad there. And for the Fox Islands uh, tomorrow, basically, especially for Alaska Island, west winds 25 to 30 knots, southwest 30 central Aleutians, uh, get into the gales west of Adak with 35 to 40 knot winds from the south southeast out that way with seas uh, pushing 20 feet. And then for the uh, outlook for Saturday, again, west-southwest, or again, 35 to 40 knot winds with the uh, direction switching to west-southwest out there. 30 to 35 knots, central Aleutians. Looks like uh, gales for the Fox Islands, minimum gales out of the, uh, mostly out of the south with seas 15 to 20 feet. And going up to the southwest coast, uh, north of Nunavak Island, we've got a northerly breeze at 15 for tomorrow, turning northwest here south of the island and sees it about four feet. Northwest, 15 for the Pribilofs. North winds, 20 knots for St. Matthew Island. And for St. Lawrence Island, uh, or actually uh, Norton Sound, northeast 20, and then a little bit brisker there for St. Lawrence Island, brisk wind advisories, or small craft advisories with 10-foot seas. 
And then those will become more easterly, 20 to 30 knots here, strongest for St. Lawrence Island, sustained 30 knots. Gales here north of Nunavik Island in a small area right through here, southeast, seas up to 10 feet. Uh, more widespread and stronger gales there for St. Matthew Island, all the way down and across the Pribilofs with uh, 13 foot seas southeast at 30 there along the southwest coast as that uh, front pushes eastward. And then for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, you can see tomorrow winds much lighter than what you saw today and expected overnight tonight. Uh, and then 15 knots for the central coast, light northerlies on the west side, and then 20 knots there from Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson. Cape Thompson southward, brisk wind advisories north 30 knots. And then for the uh, Saturday outlook, those even fall back uh, north, east to northeast 20 knots on up to Cape Beaufort, and, well actually easterlies for the west side as well. And then really light winds laying down here for the central and eastern Beaufort Sea coast for the day on Saturday uh, with just light winds. And then moving on to tonight again, front uh, pushing up toward the panhandle. So uh, periods of rain, maybe uh, rain and snow, higher with any of elevation at all. And then we've got some isolated snow showers possibly developing along the coast range here, Talkeetnas and spotty areas with mostly cloudy skies, really all across the eastern interior here, right up the eastern Arctic coast. Uh, look for some pretty good improvement, probably after midnight, but the blizzard warning out until 6 a.m. there for the eastern, for Kaktovik. Blizzard warning out, blowing snow with winds gusting 55 miles an hour here from the northwest coast into, uh, say, the Bering Strait. Snow showers along and off the coast here for the eastern Bering Sea, Alaska Peninsula areas. Front pushing eastward tomorrow with uh, rain and wind spreading into the central Aleutians, mostly with this warm front, kind of uh, timing a uh, little, might not be quite, it may uh, be a little later than sooner there, but anyway, uh, better conditions for the Alaska Peninsula and rain for the Panhandle, and then this hits the coast on Saturday with gale force winds and warmer temperatures. Thanks for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>